Hi there. This is a very quick response video, which I want to keep short and focused so more people pick up on it. This is an issue that came up during uh, Red Team Review and Preston Jacobs' response to the recent leaks about that cancelled Game of Thrones pilot on the long night titled Blood Moon. Not completely on their side. They were really nice. Uh, they gave me a big shout out in it. They con I confirmed it, the leaks they were talking about. That there was one point in it where Carmine and Preston go, I, I can't believe George signed off on this, all of these crazy ideas in the Long Night prequel. So in the comments I explained, well, no, he didn't. He was out of the loop. And they were nice. They pinned my comment. Oh, we, we forgot that. That there were actual news articles explaining Martin was totally out of the loop and really complaining about this. So... Just to remind everyone, bring them up to speed, I already told them, oh yeah, right, and the, the Hollywood Reporter article that came out right before House of the Dragon Season 1, that summer, which is the only real information we ever got about Blood Moon, where they just, I've, I've been quoting it already, that they briefly go, it was intentionally trying to be weird as possible, uh, it was trying to subvert expectations. Other quotes in that same article said, Martin himself was left scratching his head, and they sanitize it. But Martin was complaining to them, what are you doing? And he met with Goldman once or twice to just say, like, I made, like, eight lines about the Age of Heroes. There's not much to really make a show about, but here's what it is. We don't know exactly how those meetings went, but we know Martin was complaining to HBO. What I am hearing isn't good, but he was totally out of the loop. And if you're going to ask... Wow, these crazy ideas like Children of the Forest are black people, that it looks Greco-Roman, that the Lannisters are just as prominent, the Casterly origin story is shoehorned into it, all these other things. Martin didn't sign off on that any more than he did season five onward of Game of Thrones. You really think, it's so weird when you see people go, oh, Martin must have signed off on season eight. Really, when he didn't come to any of their press events, including the Emmys, you think he'd sign off on the Sansa rape and what they did to Dorne and stuff? That obviously he signed an NDA that he can't complain about these things in public, but he isn't endorsing them. Like, that he just goes, ask them, I didn't sign off on this. That it's so weird to me that even now on a broader level, people are going, oh, well, this must be book canon, otherwise, season eight. Otherwise, Martin would have complained. And it's he was in no position to do that. But the quote I want to show you, which is what I, I said in the Red Team Review Preston Jacobs thing that they pinned, is arguably the good that came out of this is it's the failure of the Long Night pilot. Not just that it failed, but it was a colossal $35 million over-budget fiasco that blew a year because they put all their eggs in one basket and developed it as the only prequel for over a year. When the whole point was we have five pitches. No, this is the only one. This is the only one. And they were ignoring that we're also... We had a Dance of the Dragons pitch and they ignored it. This failure is what convinced them to actually start listening to George R. R. Martin. And it's why we got House of the Dragon suddenly has Martin in behind-the-scenes videos again. Talking about lore. That Condal regularly talking with Martin that this is what convinced the higher-ups at HBO to start taking him seriously again. So to read off the exact... It's one big paragraph from that interview. The swiftness of HBO getting on board with Martin's desire to hire Condal. Martin picked Condal, because he knew Condal already. Was a beginning of a pivot in the author's relationship with the network. During the later seasons of Thrones and early years of HBO hunting for successor series... Martin sometimes felt out of the loop. These are their words. But it's actually the combination of the season 8 backlash and failure of Long Night that, because season 8 was the culmination of everything since they were since season 5. We don't need to listen to George R. R. Martin, but, but after the original show's season 8 backlash, which was, you know, summer of 2019, and then, like, mere months later, fall 2019, they saw this absurd pilot... That double blow within a matter of months in mid-2019. That after the Season 8 backlash, when many fans protested that storylines felt rushed to conclusion, and Martin himself has openly said, this should be like a 10-season show, 
and around the time HBO produced and rejected Blood Moon, all agree that Martin's influence rose within the company. Put simply, HBO thought, hey, maybe we ought to listen more to the guy who created all of this. You know, the living, to the, um, the American Tolkien, the living author who's still here, like if you're adapting like Faulkner or something, and he's the one telling you this. Now remember, when they realized they needed prequels all of a sudden in summer of 2016, when Benioff and Weiss went to them and said, hey, we're skipping early, the first step was going to Martin and asking, what do you think the top prequel ideas are? And he said two things, Dance of the Dragons and Dunkin' and Egg. And they hemmed and hawed on it and eventually decided, let's try other things and let's try Long Night. And it was three years wasted because by the end of 2019, they were right back to, let's do Dance of the Dragons. And then the second one was ultimately Dunkin' and Egg. So all of that was for no They blew three years because they wouldn't listen to the living author about what are the best basic ideas for a prequel series. So this is just in reaction to... You no, know, they I'm not reacting, and they were on board with me. Just Carmine and Preston went like, how could he have signed off on this? Officially, their words, not mine, in this article, Martin had been out of the loop, not just for the prequels. Since they went off book in season five, Martin was out of the loop. And during the entire development of Long Night, it just emphasized how out of the loop he was. And then this double blow of season eight, Blood Moon's expensive failure, and also that the old executives like Richard Plepler, he skipped town as soon as see, right before season eight aired. February 2019, Plepler was gone. And the new owners were in place. And the people remaining who stepped up were more reasonable and went, you know, maybe we should actually be working with Martin and have him sign off on prequels and their showrunners and I approve of this instead of just doing crazy things. So, is this... I, uh, the, now, the phrase wouldn't be this had to walk so that could run. That That's when something improves. This was downright bad. But was the failure of Long Night, this $35 million is huge, that's three times the Game of Thrones pilot, Historians might look, TV historians might look back as, was this the price we had to pay for a really good, really faithful House of the Dragon series? That this backlash to season eight and Long Night is what changed their minds. And going back even like as early as season one on Game of Thrones, he has said they really weren't listening to me that much. They didn't take me seriously. Oh, you're just the author of the books. Like, looking back in Lord of the Rings terms is like the not-well-received 1970s cartoon movies had to fail so people would be that much more dedicated to have a really faithful live-action movie adaptation starting production in the late 90s with Peter Jackson's things that, historically, do you need a failure for people to learn that lesson? That if you try to tell people this is a bad idea, they won't listen. You have to have them, the burned hand teaches best, as Gandalf would say, that you need to have a colossal failure before people go, wow, not listening to the living author is a stupid, stupid idea. I wish it was otherwise, but at least now the lesson has been learned. But just bring this to your attention, they said in the interview, this colossal failure is what led to a massive pivot behind the scenes that now they are... Martin is a real player that um, at HBO that they do what he says. And not just this in, in general terms. Right after this, he signed this exclusive five-year development deal with them, which presumably gave him, officially gave him more power. Like, they signed a new contract and everything. So this failure led to a real realignment behind the scenes. He did not sign off on it. And it's what led to, unfortunately, like... Did all the, like did the failed early '90s Fantastic Four, I'm not, the Captain America that you've never heard of, uh, with David Hasselhoff as Nick Fury or something? Did those things have to fail to leave such a bad taste in people's mouths that these were the lessons learned that led to the setting up the Marvel Cinematic Universe the right way, starting in 2008? That you need to plan these out. You need to work with people. So. This is this backlash led to Martin getting more on board 
after this terrible failure.